Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to All Cargo Gati Limited Q1 FY25 conference call hosted by Equitas Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now end the conference over to Mr. Jainam Shah from Equitas Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us on Alcalm Gati Limited, Q1 FI25, Earnings Conference Call. We have with us Mr. Philip Shah Sarkari, MD and CEO, and Mr. Anish Matthew, CFO. I hope everyone had a chance to view the financial results and investors' presentation, which will soon be posted on the company's website and stock exchanges. We will begin the call with the opening remarks from the management, followed by an open forum for Q&A. Before we begin, I would like to point out that this conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements do not guarantee the future performance of the company, and it may involve the risk uncertainties that are difficult to predict. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Philo Shahzadari. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to everyone on our quarter one FY25 earnings conference call. We have uploaded our results and earnings presentation on the stock exchange and company's website, and I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the same. As mentioned, along with me, I have Mr. Anish Matthew, the Chief Financial Officer of All Cargo Gati Limited, and our Investor Relations team. I will now share an overview of the economy, industry, and business, after which we'll hand over the call to Anish to discuss the financial performance of the company for the quarter ended June 24. I will now throw some light on the global and Indian economy. The International Monetary Fund, in its most recent update, has maintained its projection of global growth to be at 3.2% in 2024. It expects a marginal improvement in 2025 and projects the growth to be at 3.3%. While most risks to the shared outlook are balanced, some short-term risks like increase in prices of commodity and services due to renewed trade and geopolitical events still loom large. This has led to a persistent uncertainty around inflation outlook which in turn has made central banks across major economies to stay more cautious about policy easing. Forecasts for emerging markets have been revised upwards on the back of a rebound in private consumption and increased exports. In order to maintain momentum for global growth, policy easing will have to be managed effectively. Projections for India continue to be buoyant. The IMF has raised its growth forecast for India to 7% for financial year 2025, while for financial year 2026, it remains unchanged at 6.5%. This upward revision in growth forecast is believed to be on the back of improving private consumption, especially in the rural areas. For financial year 23-24, average monthly GST collections stood at rupees 1.68 lakh crores. For the first three months, April, May, and June of the financial year 24-25, the GST collections stood at 2.1, 1.73, and 1.74 lakh crores, respectively. This surge in GST collections reflects a positive economic trend for the country. Coming to the company, I would like to start by introducing the new Deputy Managing Director for Gati Express and Supply Chain Private Limited, Mr. Ketan Kulkarni. He was appointed as the Chief Growth Officer for All Cargo Group earlier this year and now has been elevated. Ketan comes with three decades of experience spanning across multiple sectors. His last was with Blue Dart Express, where he spent 17 years 
leading sustainable and strategic growth initiatives. With the induction of Ketan, we have further augmented our managerial strength. Another aspect that I would like to highlight is our cost optimization initiative. We have reported enhanced profitability at the gross and operating levels through streamlined cost optimization. I will now share some highlights on the growth pillars of the Express business. On the technology front, I'm happy to share that we have launched the first module of our new technology. We have named it GATE, Gati Associate Tracking Engine. This monitors the movement of Gati Associates, allowing real-time location and route sharing. This gives better visibility, thus enabling better customer service and better operating results. On the infrastructure front, we have successfully implemented phase one of the infrastructure update. And as already mentioned, we will continue with our journey to modernize the same in order to be future ready. We now have Ahmedabad, Kolkata, and Pune, which we will start from this quarter. We will keep you posted on the development and timeline for each of those. On the sales acceleration, our efforts on sales initiatives have ensured consistent volume growth for the company. We are closely monitoring the customer churn. The sales team is working with data science team to analyze and improve customer connect by regulated connect. On the operations front, I would like to share our key performance indicators for the quarter ended June 2024. Our PIFOT, DIFOT, and delivery efficiency stood at 90.5, 84.4, and 90.4% respectively. Other initiatives like timely and direct departures are continuously being monitored while taking corrective measures wherever needed. With this, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Anish Matthew, our CFO, for financial highlights for quarter four for financial highlights for quarter one FY25. Over to you, Anish. Thank you, Phil. Good afternoon, everyone, and very warm welcome to our Q1 FY25 earnings call. I'll take you through the highlights of financial results for the first quarter of financial year 2025. To start with, I'm happy to share that as on 30th June 2025, 2024, the company is debt free with a net cash positive of 196 crores after a successful QIP of rupees 169 crores. I would like to start with the highlights of our expert business first. Total tonnage handle for Q1 FI25 stood at 300,000 metric tons as compared to 306,000 metric tons for Q4 FI24 and 292,000 tons for F Q1 FI24. Revenue from expert business stood at rupees 358 crores as compared to rupees 355 crores for Q4 FI24 and rupees 367 crores for Q1 FI24. Corresponding gross margin has improved by 100 basis points and stands at 27 percentage for Q1 FI25 as compared to 26 percentage for the quarter ended March 2024. EBITDA for the express business stood at rupees 20 crores in Q1 FI25 as against rupees 15 crores in Q4 FI24, representing a growth of 33 percentage. Our sustained efforts on cost optimization has translated into this growth in EBITDA. The endeavor is to continue with our efforts going forward as well and look to maximize profitability. Client mix for the quarter ended June 2024 for KEA, SME, and retail stood at 63%, 19%, and 18% respectively. On a consolidated basis, the company has reported a revenue of Rs. 408 crores for Q1 FI25, as against 406 crores in the previous quarter, and Rs. 426 crores during the same quarter last year. A better margin for Q1 FI25 stood at 5%, as against 3% during Q424, and 4% in Q1 FI24. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank 
you very much. So we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment when the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Rushab from RBSA Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, so, so we have seen a 1% improvement in gross margins for the first quarter, quarter and quarter. So is it reasonable to expect that we, you know, uh, by the end of say FY25, we able to, you know, uh, improve gross margins 1% every quarter, given the cost reduction initiative that we are targeting in this year? So as I said in my last uh, quarter also, uh, we have clearly identified that the gross margin expansion will happen mainly through cost reduction. We are already on that path. Uh, we have substantially reduced our uh, operating cost as well as our SNOP, and we will continue to do that. We are also looking at uh, changing the mix of our large customers to our SME and retail. Uh, we have managed to make a change and we'll further make a change. And the combination of these will definitely get us the expansion quarter by quarter on our gross margin. So what would be the aspirational customer mix between KA accounts and MSM retail, say, two years down the line? So our first benchmark is to bring 60-40, and then the aspirational is 55-45. And so the traction now currently, the post, the study change that we did in January after hiring Mr. Uday Sharma, uh, what is it, if you could share some broader strategy in terms of adding new franchises or associates, how is the traction there, and what is the payback period for the new franchises that we are adding? So our, our business model is basically to keep growing our network, both from a service as well as from a penetration of customers in the tier one. And as and when we get substantial volume, we open up a franchise so that it will enable us to service the customer well. And in turn, the franchise also starts selling. The Return on investment is by both methodologies. One is by servicing the customer and therefore enhancing the business from various customers to that PIN code of new service, as well as then looking at uh, uh, creating some business around that PIN code. It differs from PIN code to PIN code. There is no one uh, real uh, uh, return on investment, but the fact that we open up a franchisee means that we have substantial volume that can get delivered to us. So we have been uh, hovering around the 300, uh, you know, like uh, the 3 lakh metric tons in the volume range. So uh, for FI25, is it reasonable to expect that we grow at least 12 to 13 percent volumes in this year and the year after that as well? No, so we have put out that in, in this year, we would be looking at anywhere around 15% growth. We have now set our uh, uh, sales as well as operations, and therefore, uh, with season coming up this quarter, we are looking at uh, ramping up the growth. And then for the next couple of quarters, it should be plus of 15, 16%. Next couple of years, you mean, or quarters? Years. Okay. And so we had earlier had a target of, you know, uh, revenue of 3,000 crores by FI26 with 10 to 12 percent margin. So where does it stand today? Since now we're also having, uh, you know, management change, uh, how, do, how do you look at the company? So uh, 
So we will continue to grow this business. The profitability is very clearly the first target for us to get. Like I've said, we are looking at uh, getting us to the 30 plus percent gross margin and 10 plus percent uh, EBITDA. And uh, we strongly believe that we should achieve this by 26, 27. That is 3,000 crore target and this margin, is it without the all contract logistics business? Because the merger will happen by then. Oh. It is with the contract logistics business. It is with, okay. Yes. Because I assume that uh, the contract logistics is a very you know, high margin, say 35 or 30, 35% margin plus. So, you know, achieving 10 to 12% percent will should not be a challenge on a console basis. Correct. The only thing is it's a small business just now. So the proportion of the business is uh, small compared to the excess business. Okay. Because uh, at the years, in the say, you know, four to five years, uh, the, the three India's margins that those guys are targeting is 14, 15%. So in the long term, that should be the aspiration, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so thank you. I'll just give back the queue. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Jainam Shah from Equities Securities. Please wait. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Also, my question relates to the corporate restructuring pass first. So, how we are going uh, ahead with that particular plan? By when it is expected to have the uh, uh, another entity uh, like Algar Logistics and Algar EQ Limited? Uh, is this on time or December uh, this year? So, we have filed. Uh, with the stock exchanges who have given their approval and the file is with SEBI post that it will go to the NCLP. So we believe that the latest by first quarter of next year, we should get the merger done. Okay, sir. Okay, got it. And sir, on the uh, operational uh, part, uh, you have said that there has been an expansion in the gross margin uh, this particular quarter. Uh, however, how is the overall industry volume going on? Are we seeing any slowdown in the overall industry volume or is this, is this just this quarter impact because of election? And if we see from next two to three years perspective, how are express business is expected to pan out as compared to the overall market growth? So I think if I were to answer your second question first, Express Logistics has a very, very large role to play when manufacturing comes into the country in a big way. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, manufacturers uh, who want to make it large would want inventories on wheel for their finished products uh, and not really uh, store them for a long period of time. So from that perspective, we believe that Express Logistics is going to play a very important role, and therefore the growth of Express Logistics should be, as manufacturing happens, uh, should be exponentially large in this country. Coming to the first quarter, yes, there were a couple of things. One is, of course, the uh, election. Second is, we did have some natural uh, calamities in certain parts of the uh, country, and therefore volumes were subdued. But um, this quarter, July, August, September, as you know, is supposed to be the one of the largest quarters for the pre-festivities uh, 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 inventory, and therefore uh, we should see a very good second quarter. Got it, got it, sir. Uh, if I have anything, I will join with the queue. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Rushab from RBSA Investment Manager. Please wait. Hello? Yes, so one of the, what you've been hearing in the market is one of the you know large in, uh, players has been reducing prices to gain entry with new customers. So, what is your assessment as far as the yield is are concerned for the company? 
have the yield stabilized uh, you know and also we are targeting a you know, targeted intra versus uh, interstate mix so that has been corrected so far so like i have been saying before as far as this concern the way we will improve our yield is by improving our mix and not by going to the customer to increase that because we that in india logistics costs are still extremely high and therefore it is important for us to first optimize the cost rather than asking customers to pay more we believe that the mix between zonal and uh, uh, the national play is continuously improving and that will not affect really the yield but the growth margin should uh, get better because the cost direct costs are far lower in the mix of uh zonal play rather than national play and so we have recently done a fundraiser of around 160 170 crores uh, so uh, it uh, does this you know cater to our growth strategy for the next 2 3 years but we would not like to do fundraise another in the near term at least so we have uh, done this for the growth strategy as you know the group has now Uh, got four separate listed entities, and each entity has its own management MD and should have its own fund. And therefore, uh, we did a QIP by which we now have growth capital for ourselves, which we will invest in infrastructure, in technology, as well as other processes which we uh, require. So yes, to answer your question, uh, we have uh, money for. Uh, the next growth and so we want to be requiring fundraising at least for the next 3 three to 4 years uh, is that that what the understanding is so fundraising depends on the circumstance right uh, it's not something that one can say no at all to uh, it all depends on what is the opportunity where is the opportunity and what is the fund requirement so i cannot say no to that right now okay And so we are. We said that we are targeting a direct cost reduction of 5% in FY25. But if you look at FY26, uh, there will be more opportunities to reduce cost. Right? This is not the you know, dead end for us for our cost reduction initiatives. Sorry, I did not get your question. I'm just saying, like we have targeted a cost reduction of 5% in FY25 in terms of direct cost. So when I look at FY26, uh, there will be more initiatives to reduce cost as far as the company is concerned. Yes, absolutely. So, as you know, in our uh, express logistics industry, the more the volume, the better the cost, because the unit economics uh, changes. Right. So, as we start increasing our volume, the ability for us to reduce our cost per kg increases also. So, definitely, it will be a continuous process and not one-off only in twenty-five. And so, is it this is, uh, so from onwards? Since you know, a lot of groundwork has happened now, since uh, since when the Olga group, group took uh, took over, and the next uh, three to five years, uh, can Gatti be the you know sustainably be the number two player in the B2B express space? And all efforts are towards that achieving that. Absolutely. So clearly, we will measure ourselves by the growth that we do. Uh, quarter over quarter uh, and that has to be beating the market uh, growth only then can we become market leaders and the group itself stands for market leadership so that's the way we are driving our team and so we mention about employee uh, headcount rationalization uh, time and again so is that exercise completely over or can we see some benefits in that on that front as well No, as technology rolls in, we will see more benefits on that end. Okay. So, is there any well, timelines? Because you mentioned that first module has been launched. As in, when the mod- modules keep get launching, how much benefit can we see in the PNL? So, I had last time also said that we have a very large compared to competition. If you see our uh, below gross margin. Uh, Uh, SNOP for employee costs. It is 
as a percentage of sales larger than competition. This is basically because our technology is very old. So as the new technology rolls out, we have opportunity to reduce a large number of people uh, from our uh, SNOP cost. And sir, so currently in the, uh, the all the key accounts that we are currently catering, would the would we be in the top three or top two vendors for most of our uh, existing customers, or there is still scope scope for improvement in existing key accounts as well? So there is tremendous scope uh, for improving our wallet share with the customer uh, today. On an average, our wallet share is about thirty percent with the large customers. So we still have a good opportunity to increase our wallet share. And sir, so just to understand, uh, what will be the minimum and maximum revenue of our key key account customers? Just to understanding the you know, understanding understand the customer, uh, what uh, classification comes in the key accounts? Is there a metric that you can share? So the way we have set it up uh, right now is that all customers who are above 20 lakhs of revenue annual are in a key account or budget okay. account. Okay. Okay, so thank you so much, sir. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sukriti from Librim Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. This is Sukriti from Librim Capital. I have one question. Um, I believe a lot of the um, uh, B2C e com players are adding uh, PTL Express. Um, as a vertical, we saw Delivery do that with Spot On a few years ago, but a bunch of others seem to be adding uh, B2B Express as a vertical to better utilize the same B2C line. And the logic there is that it gives us a cost advantage on both uh, the uh, PTL Express as well as the B2C side. Are you seeing um, this space, the, at least the organized space, becoming a lot more competitive uh, given that there are a number of new players uh, in B2B Express from the B2C side versus, uh, let's say, four or five years ago? So thank you for asking this question. Uh, you know, the number of players that you're talking about, according to me, is just two, first of all. I don't know more than two players. Uh, having said that, B2B network are very different from B2C uh, networks, and it becomes extremely difficult if somebody has to start a B2B network today and make it a pan-India play. So while people have definitely realized that B2B is a pr more profitable uh, business than B2C and therefore want to include B2B in their uh, uh, network, I think there is a huge barrier to entry uh, for those who do not have an existing network. So just to push back on this, Phil, um, see, the B2C network would uh, be much larger. In my, uh, as I understand, the B2B would network would cover less number of PIN codes as opposed to a B2C network. So if you already have a B2C network, and you want to piggyback a B2B network on top of that, aren't you just catering to a subset of your current PIN codes and you're not really building out something um, in, uh, you're not expanding on your current network? So if you look at the loads that move in a B2C network, to cater to those loads, the kind of network that you build out and the last mile that you build out is very different than the network that you build out for B2B. A B2C truck today, a 30-footer truck carries anywhere between three to four tons of material. And therefore, on the other side, you are catering to three to four tons of material, whereas a B2B truck carries 10 to 11 tons of material in the same truck. And if you were to say that the network uh, of a b can be used for B2B, that would be a disaster because the cost that you will incur to deliver B2B in a B2C network will be tremendous because B2B requires four-wheeler capacity utilization, whereas B2C is mainly done on a two-wheeler. 
Got it. Got it. So there are no synergies um, as per what you're saying. This is a little different from what you would typically hear in a delivery call do. It is very different. Got it. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one for ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Jaman Shah. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. Also, this, this question relates to the acquisition by the Alcargo. So basically, if we see uh, four to five years back, Alcargo has acquired the Gati, and there has been a clear path how to uh, make it profitable going forward. As we are in between of that particular path, how we are seeing next three to five years uh, turning out to be the, for the Gati? And other question would be on the contract logistics business. As once a small portion of the GHCPL of contract logistics and also for the uh, uh, all supply chain comes together, uh, how we are working on that particular business growth? So thank you for asking this question. Um, you know, it's been now almost four years that all cargo acquired Gati, and. Uh, while a lot of work has been done and we have literally cleaned up the balance sheet now, if you look at the balance sheet of all cargo Gati, I think we are at an inflection point as far as the operations and sales is concerned. And the next two years will see growth and profitability in this organization. As far as contract logistics is concerned, it was a niche business that got acquired again by All Cargo. And then post acquisition, we expanded that business into uh, non chemical. So, so when we acquired the business, it was only a chemical warehousing company. And then we have now expanded it into areas of e commerce, automotive, and engineering. And I think it has been a phenomenal uh, uh, growth story in the contract logistics business. Although small, we are looking at this business growing at a CAGR of 30% in the next three years because the opportunity that is available in the market is huge. Uh, so basically, the reason why we have a scheme out there for merging these two businesses is because we believe that uh, as manufacturing comes into the country, we will need fulfillment logistics, and these large manufacturers will need one-point service providers who can give them both warehousing and distribution. Got it, got it, sir. And also, if you look from the market share angle, uh, of course, there has been, if we see last four to five quarters, the growth has been muted across the industry major players. Uh, what would be the steps that you would be taking to gain by the market share that was there maybe seven, eight years back? And uh, maybe some infrastructure, uh, maybe IT system that were not in place, now coming in place. Is it going to help us in market share as well with the improving efficiency at our uh, delivery timeline and all those things? Oh, absolutely. So that is why what we have shown as growth for the next two, three years is more than the industry group. That's how we intend to increase our uh, market share. We believe that we have got one of the deepest networks in the country and most of the growth will come from the tier one, tier two cities in this country. And that's where a network that Gati has will be able to capitalize upon that growth. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, so this contrast to what other uh, companies were telling or their reporting, there has been a stress in their margins and few of the cost structure for those companies are increasing. Uh, by any chance, uh, if we able to uh, have the better uh, uh, margins as compared to the past, but because of the cost pressure at the industrial level, we might uh, have some, uh, like we might lose some margins against what we have expected. No, on the contrary, at Gati, we are concentrating on clearly quarter over quarter optimizing our cost. And we believe that there is huge opportunity for us to do so. And therefore, if 
yield is being constant if we can optimize our costs our margins have to expand having said that we also believe that a good mix of the sme and retail customer going up as we have shown in this quarter over last quarter that will also contribute to uh, better gross margins and therefore better ebitas for the organization got it sir and on this uh, sme part i will uh, i would say that uh, always there is been a branding that might attract the sme customers so after the recorporate restructuring our name would be algargo logistics so uh, what could be our plan are we going ahead with the gati brand or we would be having algargo's brand only going for maybe after one year or something or how would we uh, rebranding entire business for specifically for the sme customers to be their options so our brand already is now all cargo gati it is neither only all cargo nor gati it is all cargo gati so we have the benefits of both uh one of the industry leaders at one time gati and the current industry leader all cargo putting together the brand is all cargo gati and i think with the induction of ketan who has been spearheading marketing for blue dart for the last more than a decade we will see a lot more marketing happening out of the all cargo gati arena go to go to so that's it from my side thank, thank you so much sir thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question Our next question is from the line of Gautam from Mayuran Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Just a small clarification on what you mentioned earlier on the EBITDA margin. Um, you said uh, the EBITDA margin guidance um, includes the contract logistics, and uh, that would still make it 10%. Now, I assume you are talking about 10% pre-NDS, right? Because at the moment on on my numbers at least from what i was saying in fy24 pro forma for your uh, merger with contract logistics you are already at 10% pre pre in the cbda margin so what you are saying is 10 and 10% um, pre in there not post in there i'm saying pre in there okay okay so so that means a substantial margin improvement from today's levels Yes, something like five uh, to six percent. Like I said, we have a contract logistics business which is still substantially smaller than our express logistics business. So as we grow that, and we are very positive about that business growth, uh, doing a kager of thirty percent over the next two three years, uh, that should give us a good margin for our businesses put together. Okay. and of course we keep improving our uh, express margin goals no i just uh, this is an important point uh, because contract logistics being a 40% ebitda margin business um, post nds but pre nds it's only about uh, 12% so on a combined basis you're talking about a pre pre nds number yes perfect thank you sir thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronald from Sher Khan Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, uh, the first question is, you know, are we done with the you know old legacy issues with respect to key accounts? Because as going ahead, also you will be rationalizing a uh, few accounts. Uh, to uh, into the mix so should there be a stability or can there be you know one or two quarter where you know this uh, issues or legacy issues can come from so i can only say that 99% is over i cannot say 100% but yes uh, old legacies are over you've seen the uh, eclm provision reduced in the last Four quarters from what it was four quarters back, that in itself gives the confidence that most of the old legacy issues are now over. Great, sir. And secondly, on you, if you can 
tell us uh, what about the capex numbers you know what you are expected to do over the next 2 to 3 years in terms of capex and the funds which would be utilized in you know, the uh, the funds how they would be utilized going ahead so we have set aside very clearly when i did when we did our qip also 30 crores for technology and uh, another 40 crores for uh, infrastructure which means the size of the new hubs that we lease out uh, as we uh, move forward and that basically is the capex investment that we would look at on the all cargo gadi side of the business okay and this would be over the next two years right? two years yes oh, thank you and best of luck thank you a reminder to all participants please press star and one to ask question our next question is from the line of jainab shah please go ahead sir no i think before the opportunity again uh, so this question relates to uh, the amalgamation that we would be having with contract logistics and our b2b express business so if you see your our competitor as well that there would be an added advantage to have a transportation as well as rail and business under one umbrella so uh, how we are building on to the additional revenue we might get with these two businesses coming together so first of all even today as you know the number of customers in express logistics is far far more than the number of customers in contract logistics so one is cross sales which is basically taking the contract logistics customers to the express customers who have the need for contract logistics uh, number 2 is applying for the rfqs for both warehousing and distribution together and giving a single unit price to the customer so that the customer clearly understands that there is a price per order for them rather than a separate price for warehousing and a separate price for distribution and i think that is what the customer would be looking forward to so that they know exactly the cost of uh, fulfilling an order from their side uh so we believe that it will also make our express business more sticky than what it is today because contract logistics generally gives you a longer term so it's about it and so the sorry sorry so good can you hear me yes sir yes sir ladies and gentlemen a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question our next question is from the line of madhur rathi from counter cycling investments please go ahead Uh, so thank you for the opportunity sir i wanted to understand i'm a little bit new to the company sir why has our revenue been stagnant for the past 40 5 to 6 quarters and similarly our volume so you have guided by the 15 golden volume growth we can expect for this year but why were they uh, flat for the next uh, previous 5 to 6 quarters if you look at our volume <laughs> we have grown the last year by 9% in our volume it's not been flat basically the volume growth and we will continue to our uh, what as our infrastructure and our uh, improve so that one data point that i'd like to uh, register the other is of course now with the new uh, focus sales team under the uh, chief commercial officer uday sharma who has joined the last three four months from uh, spot on delivery we believe that we'll get a specific to the growth that we offer in the 
last one year. Okay. Answer what kind of uh, realization or the yield increase can we see from the shift from uh, the larger clients to SME and retail? Hello? I did not get your question. Can you repeat it? Yes. yes. So, what kind of yield or realization per ton uh, increase can we see from the shift from larger customers to the SME and the retail customers? For FI daily five, as well as the next year. So um, we we are looking forward, right? We are hovering at an uh, overall yield of about eleven point eight. We look for increasing it by ten by say year for the next two years by changing the mix. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's it. That was from my side. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ravi Mehta from One Up Yeah, uh, so just to, uh, I couldn't catch the number you just said earlier, and then I'll just come to my question. Hello? I, was, I was saying that we are looking at increasing our yield by 10 paise year on year by changing the mix of large customer to small and uh, retail customers. Okay, and my question was actually pertaining to the mix. So we saw a mix change in this Q1 uh, on a sequential basis, but it was very similar on YOI basis. So is this a seasonality element and the uh, key account mix will again go up in the coming quarters or, or this is a structural one? I just wanted some color on this. So like I had said in my last quarter, uh, post the induction of uh, our chief commercial officer, uh, we have been concentrating on an insight sale for the small MSME customers. While we have not completely uh, uh, still uh, done the insight sale setup, uh, it has started in the first quarter and we are very buoyant on the change that will come about because of that. Uh, so we we'll continue to focus on inside sales to attract the smaller customers for us. Okay, okay. So broadly the mix you think would be similar to Q1 or maybe a little bit uh, may still skew towards key accounts in this year? So we will be looking at uh, ending the year with a mix of about 60-40. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now in the conference over to Mr. Prayush Shah, Sarkari, for closing comments. So thank you, everyone. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, please do get back to our investor relations team. And we look forward to meeting you all in the next quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Equimedia Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.